Hello and welcome! In this video, I'm going to take you step by step as I create this gouache painting in my sketchbook. Um, I'm using Horridom gouache in this painting and a little bit of some M-gram that I had. So when I first started this, I toned my paper with just some red watercolor paint I had sitting around. And so I got rid of all the white. And then I quickly, but not this quickly, sketched out the outline shapes of Cowgirl on a Horse. And then you could call this like some fan art too. Um, this is Emmy on her horse Goose riding in um, some mountains. And I'll leave a link to her socials in the description. So I'm gonna start by playing around with mixing some greens. So I just grabbed some titanium gold ochre and now I'm grabbing some Delph Blue. And both of those are from Horridom Gouache Schminka paints. And now I'm grabbing some Titanium White. Um, I don't keep white in my Stay Wet palettes. I've actually moved away from my Stay Wet palettes. Um, I just have, you know, playing around with different colors and kind of just like putting them fresh out. So I made a green that I was happy with. With gouache, you really have to mix enough of a color because it's really hard to mix the same color again because when it gouache dries, it kind of has a color shift. It doesn't dry exactly the same color that you mix. So sometimes when you remix colors, it can be slightly different. So if you want everything like the same color, mix a whole bunch of that paint. And you know, this is a little study. And so I wasn't too worried about it being picture perfect. I really wanted to play around with gouache and I had this idea of using a complementary color as the background. So that's why most of the painting I'm doing is greens and so that's why I chose a red watercolor for the, um, the base layer. So I'm still just using the titanium gold ochre and the delft blue and actually and, and plus white of course and actually I wouldn't normally choose these colors in my palette but at the time I was watching quite a bit of um, Sarah Burns here on YouTube and some of you might know of her and so I was really inspired by her to try those colors and I just spritzed my palette with some water to moisten the paint because as you have a stay wet palette open things dry out and you don't really want to introduce a lot of water to your gouache because then it gets watery and gouache is more about being an opaque paint and I'm not too worried about filling in all the gaps with the paint between the different hill layers and you'll see why later so still using that titanium gold ochre Delf Blue, Titanium White, I was really liking that um, color combo. And so I'm mixing the colors in the lid of my Stay Wet palette. And above that is a um, like a little seashell um, dish I found at Goodwill and I use that to mix colors too. And the paint brushes I'm using in this video are by Sarah Burn Studio and Craftimo. It's their little collaboration kits. I really enjoy them for gouache. I mean, they were designed for gouache, so bonus. <laughs> and the sketchbook I'm using is just a generic sketchbook. It's not even 100% cotton. Um, I'll leave a link for that below in the description as well. So if you want to look it up, you can. So I decided to switch from my smaller brush to this big flat brush so I could work smarter and not harder and cover more area. Working from a big brush to a smaller brush can be really helpful because you can just get more, more coverage. You can get more done. You'll see that I sometimes use my palette knife to move the paint. When I was working with this bigger brush, I really didn't want to get that really deep into the wells because sometimes, you know, cleaning the brush, it can be a lot of work. You gotta get water out of it so you don't mix it with the paint. I'm also using an ivory black by M. Graham & Co. Their gouache paint. And that's sitting up 
in the little seashell dish as well. So you'll see me grabbing some black from up there and sometimes some white as well. You're gonna notice that I'm being pretty careful not to paint in the cowgirl and the horse because I am working with an artist or designer gouache. And that is very similar to watercolors as in it can get reactivated with water. So lay doing layers on top of it can be tricky because you can accidentally activate the layer underneath that you're painting over. So you have to be really conscious of that. And that's why I'm not just painting over my cowgirl. So you're going to see I got a dark band, a light band, and a medium dark band. Just playing around with the different shadows to help show the different hills. No, I don't usually paint this fast. I kind of sped up the video because I figured you wouldn't want to watch me paint for an entire hour. So I wanted to show my color mixing process as well, but you know, have it sped up a little bit for you. So there'll be moments like this where it's kind of slowed down and then other moments where I s speed it up. I'm, I'm not a robot. <laughs> I don't paint this fast. getting some more black, adding it into my green mixture, a little too much black so I added more of the Delft Blue and the Titanium Gold Ochre to make some more layers within the hills of this painting. Get some more depth, show the distance. So I want to get one of my smaller brushes to show some of the taller grasses in the foreground. Really helps show the distance within this small painting. And once again, it's just a mixture of the Delft Blue, Titanium Gold Ochre, Titanium White, and then a little bit of Ivory Black. And that's all the greens I'm making. I chose to use a more like golden hue of yellow instead of my lemon yellow in the palette. I actually don't touch that yellow at all for this painting um, because I wanted more of a subdued green versus a super bright springy green. And this is the part why I wasn't worried about having some gaps in between the different layers of the colors of green because I knew I was going to add some little trees in the distance. Once again, kind of showing the scale and you know the distance between the foreground and the far background. Once again, using my palette knife to move some paint around. That way I don't have to keep on, you know, cleaning my brush in between the colors. 
So this was some Delph Blue and my Burnt Sienna. Mixing that up with some white to get some gray colors. I mean, I could have used my black and white to make a gray, but I wanted to make my own black to make the gray to give it a little bit more character. Once again, using a flat brush to cover some larger areas. In my watercolor paintings, I really enjoy round brushes, but when I want to add a lot of paint to an area, I find with gouache, the flat brushes really helpful. When I was painting this, I was I felt like I was sculpting the rock, like thinking, okay, the different faces of the rock, not just like one big blobby shape. Um, to me, it looks like giant um, pieces of basalt rock, just these giant columns. And depending how light hits them, it shows the different shadows and shows the the structure of the rock. And so. That was, that was a lot of fun. I, I've done rock climbing and stuff, and you know, rocks can be pretty cool. Once again, mixing my Delph Blue, Burnt Sienna, and some white to make a darker color to show the shadows that the rocks cast to show the formations of rock. some white and brush it out so it's not like pure white it's kind of like a dirty white to show where the Sun is really highlighting the rock surfaces a simple way to make something 3d you need to have a light color a medium color and a dark color the light color is like the highlight the medium color could be the base color and then the dark color is going to be like the shadows Once again, I spritzed the palette to moisten up the paint because it was starting to get tacky and gummy and dried out. Um, a little bit of introduction of water over time when you're working in gouache can be helpful. You don't want it to like dry out in the palette. So I want to clear my palette out, so I'm just using the palette knife to scrape out the, the paint that started getting gummy and then wipe it out with my paper towel a couple times. That way it'll be easier to mix some more colors. So once again, getting some of my um, Delph Blue and Burnt Sienna. And then grabbing some white and mixing that in. So I'm starting on her shirt, this color I mixed up. 
and as I'm painting it, as you can see, it matches the background, and you know, I kind of want her to come forward and not get hidden in the background, so that's when I decided I'm going to change the color I am painting her. So I added some of my red, which is a Pyrrol Red by M. Graham & Co. And now I'm adding some white to help form the fabric. So I'm getting some whites to make some highlights. And as you work on art, you know, you can change things around. You can change colors to improve it as a painting. You don't have to be 100% true to what's in the photo. So using the Delft Blue, Burnt Sienna, and Titanium White, I made like this grayish tan color for her hat. And I'm having it lighter than the rocks so that it comes forward within the painting. up the background behind it with some darker colors once again that contrast of the light colored hat and a darker colored background can really help bring the subject closer to whoever's looking at the piece and now I'm giving her uh, a long ponytail So I'm getting my um, titanium gold ochre and pyro red, and then of course we've got the titanium white. Just going back and forth with the different amounts until I get the color I like. I just grabbed some other colors that I have sitting in the palette and putting them down here and there, trying to, you know, create the form of my the shirt and then of course her arm, her hair and everything. Now it's time to start on the back of the saddle. I don't remember if she had like a um, bedroll or um, coat or something in the back. I think, I think there is. And then um, she's also wearing some shaps that are like a, a light tan. You'll see me mixing those as well. And then um, I believe the saddle had some tapaderos, which is like a leather covering for the front side of the stirrup so that your foot doesn't go all the way into the stirrup accidentally and it, it doesn't get stuck if something happens. So you'll see now I'm doing that tan color for the shaps. It's really similar to the color of her arm that you see on the left but it's it's not skin it's shaps which is a leather leg covering to protect riders when they're going through the brush pretty 
much this whole painting is with, let's see, four colors and a white and a black. We've got the Delft blue and some white, which I'm using to paint the sky right now. And then we also got the titanium gold ochre, burnt sienna, um, the pyrrole red, and ivory black. And I'll also have those down in the description so you can check those out. And if you are enjoying watching me paint a cowgirl, horseback, and gouache, I would love for you to leave a comment. Let me know your favorite part of this painting, like this whole video. Like, do you really enjoy watching the color mixing process? Do you like to see, you know, the scenery, the subject I'm painting? I'd love to know what you enjoy about this video so that I can make more videos that you would like to see. Um, so now I'm starting on the horse and I mix a lot of white with a little bit of a titanium called ochre because the horse goose has a little bit of, I think he, he has a little bit of golden hue to him. And so I wanted to show his muscle formations and then how he's walking and everything by denoting what's in the sun and what's kind of shadowed. And so I use a little bit of my blue with a lot of white to show like the shadows. And then I use a little bit of the, the gold color with a lot of white to show like the highlights and everything. So you're going to see me building that up right now along with the swish of his tail and you just see his back legs in this painting. But I think you get a really good idea of how the horse is moving. So I've been painting the whole main body with this decent sized flat brush to get, do the coverage. Kind of like I talked about earlier, like doing the big areas with a bigger brush. Work smarter, not harder, you know, get the work done. And then I switched over to a much smaller flat brush to get some more of the details and working in the different subtle color shifts to show some of the muscle differentiate the tail from the rump and um, highlighting the top of the hawk which is um, the on the back leg of a horse basically like a backwards knee <laughs> it's the easiest way to explain it I think um, and then getting a liner brush now to show some really detailed line work of like the tail swishing and some of the little tiny shadows here and there I also use the liner brush to show some more um, little shadows in her shirt and on the tapaderos and then her little hat band there just to do a couple little details. I kept this painting mostly loose working with larger brushes because this is just a study, a practice piece and you, you could call it a little bit of fan art. <laughs> doing a little last detail work with my liner brush and some of the white paint, adding some highlights here and there to really help build and show the formation since I didn't make it super duper detailed, doing little bits here and there. I'll even do like her little ponytail holder. And so here is the finished piece. I really wanna thank you so much for following along. Um, this whole video. I would love for you to give it a like and if you haven't subscribed, I would love for you to do that. 
Well, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.